when the worst happens to an athlete during competition, like what we saw last night during the Monday Night Football game, you want that life-saving speed of medical care that was administered to Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin when his heart stopped after a hit. Hamlin's still in critical condition tonight. Colorado's high school athletes, they don't have access to NFL-level medical care on a moment's notice. In fact, our Marshall Zellinger found out there might not even be an athletic trainer on duty. Last night highlighted the need for athletic trainers in schools. Michael Kruger is the commissioner for CHASA, the Colorado High School Activities Association, which requires this emergency action plan to be submitted for every venue that hosts a practice or athletic event. Where an automatic external defibrillator is located, um, who, uh, who is uh, in charge of the situation, how are we going to get an ambulance in. One emergency action plan cannot cover multiple facilities, and you know we have gymnasiums and fields and courts and pools. An emergency action plan like that was used one year ago tomorrow when a basketball referee collapsed at Bear Creek High School when his pacemaker battery died. The certified athletic trainer, Ashley Cowan, was at his side in nine seconds and got an automatic external defibrillator, an AED, to shock the ref who survived. Certified trainers like Cowan are not required in high school sports. They are highly trained to handle these type of situations and we just don't have the funding in a lot of areas to have certified athletic trainers in schools. I think that anyone that you talk to would say they would prefer if there was a certified athletic trainer on site to provide care during high school athletic events. Jeb Davis is the president of the Colorado Athletic Trainers Association. He told me when a certified athletic trainer is not on site, that does not mean there is no care. The care and prevention and the initial um, triage and treatment falls to usually the coaching staffs, coaching staffs and high school administration. CHASA requires coaches to have training in CPR, AEDs, and first aid. Having a certified athletic trainer would be a cost school districts would have to fund. My ask would be this, it would just be that administration, respective of costs, seriously consider employing a certified athletic trainer. I don't think there's any reason that NFL athletes should be treated differently than, say, someone at a freshman cheer event. Davis tells me the larger the school district or school, likelier to have a certified athletic trainer. They can also double as teachers. However, some are just hired for athletic events, but no matter how they're employed, they need to be paid, and that's from the school district funds, and this is the same money that goes to pay teachers, yeah. utilities, supplies, so fighting over the same money that anybody else in a school district might fight over. So what we saw happen to DeMar Hamlin last night was the first time that a lot of people have seen that happen in an athletic event. It's happened a couple of other times. The idea of somebody needing CPR or an AED, that's a far more likely occurrence. Right, and you saw that one example from a year ago tomorrow at Bear Creek. I've heard um, there's an example at Platte Canyon of, a, of another basketball ref where the athletic trainer saved their life with an AED. At Liberty High School in Colorado Springs, a freshman on the football field went down. Between the nurse and the athletic trainer, they used an AED, got the kid revived, survived, and, and, and I, I understand him playing other sports, not football right yeah. now, but is back in school a year later. And all of it just speaks to the importance of people being CPR trained, defibrillator trained, to be able to help anybody within proximity. Marshall, thank you. Mm -hmm.